I have finally figured out who the knight is in Deltarune. I've looked at every evidence I could find from the game files, to the egg, to the shadow crystals, to the Undertale 6 anniversary livestream, and even the freaking horse stable. Make sure to subscribe and like the video for more Undertale and Deltarune theories like this one. Enjoy the video. Let's start off with something obvious. It is heavily implied that Chris is the knight, but if you remember from my last theory, I argued that wasn't the case. Of course, many people would respectfully disagree with that and with good reason. I mean, the sprite files of Deltarune Chapter 2 literally say that this animation is called Fountain. So yeah, it would be obvious that Chris is creating a fountain here, which I would say is yes. That's true. Chris is actually making a fountain here. But that doesn't necessarily mean that Chris is the knight. I think the knight is actually someone else. Someone that is pulling the puppet strings from afar. Someone that has been here since Undertale. And someone who is a scientist. The knight of Deltarune is actually Gaster. Allow me to explain. You're probably screaming at your screen right now, especially considering that one meme where if something is unexplained in the Undertale canon, it's always Gaster. And well, for the most part, I'd say that's actually true. But there's tons of sufficient evidence in Undertale and Deltarune Chapter 1 and 2 that heavily support this. And it all has to do with the Soul Theory. If you haven't yet, I highly recommend watching the Soul Theory video. Although not required, it does allow a bit of background knowledge on the basics of soul theory to help you better understand this one. If you end up watching soul theory, make sure to come back to this video after. Alright, let's get into it. In my original soul theory video, I specified that at the end of Undertale Genocide, you traded in your soul to restore the world back to the way it was before you did the genocide route. I stated that this mysterious voice took your soul and put it inside of Chris, but I never gave an explanation as to who this person is and why they put your soul into Chris in the first place. Well, this voice is actually gaster and whoa 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 before you start screaming at your screen again i have sufficient evidence here to back this claim up there is one word that gaster absolutely loves to say and that word is the word interesting the word interesting has appeared in almost every place Gaster has been in. In entry number 17, the word interesting has been used. It's a very strange coincidence that the first word used with this mysterious voice would also be the word interesting. This voice couldn't be Kara, as Kara has never actually used the word interesting before. Of course, that one word wouldn't be enough to strongly prove this is Gaster. We do need more evidence, but for that, we need to establish another place where Gaster has appeared in. At the very beginning of Dutch Room Chapter 1. He's the first character you ever meet. The first initial sequence the player goes through is extremely weird. Let's try to break this down. Firstly, the word interesting has been repeated here multiple times, which we have already established is the word that Gaster likes to use the most. I mean, that's kind of already a red flag. Next, the vessel you make in this sequence is actually labeled as Goner in the game files. And thirdly, it's the name of the music that plays here that sets off the alarms. If you didn't know in Undertale, Gaster actually has his own theme. The music file for this theme in Undertale is labeled as just him. OGG. In Deltarune, the music file that plays during this first initial sequence is named Another Him. OGG. Finally, before every release of Deltarune, the Undertale Twitter blacks out and starts typing in all capital letters, just like at the beginning of Chapter 1. If you count the squares that are replacing the username, it will come out as exactly the same amount as characters as Gaster. And well, with that, we've established that this being you speak to is actually Gaster. And using what we know about the word interesting, we can determine that the mysterious voice at the end of Genocide is Gaster as well. But wait, there is a hole here. Gaster has already been confirmed to always speak in capital letters. In entry number 17, and even at the beginning of Deltarune Chapter 1, there's no way this mysterious voice could be Gaster then. I mean, this voice uses normal grammar, so does this mean this entire theory is now completely deconstructed? Confirmed. While, yes, Gaster does speak in all capital letters most of the time, there are times where he speaks in lowercase as well. I want to bring your attention to this horse stable in Undertale. Also, I will be coming back to this horse stable later in this theory. <clears throat> but, uh, Gaster is inside of this horse stable. Yeah. If you interact with him, he says X in lowercase. 
Windings font. This is one of the only times Gaster has spoken in lowercase, which means that the consistency with Gaster speaking in all uppercase is now broken. Which also means that the mysterious voice could also easily be Gaster. And with that, we've established completely that this voice is Gaster and he put your soul inside of Chris. But why? Why would Gaster do it? Well, there's only one reason for it. For science. According to the Gaster followers in Undertale, Gaster was the royal scientist before Alphys, so it makes sense that after he was scattered throughout time and space that he would want to continue his scientific research. He put your soul inside of Chris to start a new science experiment. The greatest science experiment in history, but there is a problem he couldn't do it by himself. Having the entire story of Deltarune be one giant science experiment would be extremely hard to pull off by one person. Naturally, you would need help with a project this big, right? So of course Gaster would need to enlist somebody to help him, right? But who would he ask for help? Especially with something as dangerous as this, you'll need someone who is as smart as you. Someone who has as much courage as you and would be willing to stick it through to the end. And that someone is himself. Deltarune is an alternate universe to Undertale. In this Undertale, the war between the humans and monsters never happened. This means that there would be no reason for Asgore to hire a royal scientist to break down the barrier keeping the monsters underground. There is no barrier to break, there is no king, there is no queen, so there isn't a need for a royal scientist either. Without the need of a royal scientist, why would Gaster fall into his creation in the first place? There wouldn't even be a creation to even fall into! That's why the music file at the beginning of chapter 1 is called Another Hymn. Because it is Another Hymn. This isn't the same Gaster you've been talking to from the Undertale world. This is the Gaster from the Deltarune world. So now there are two Gasters to deal with, and each one is doing a different task to make sure this Deltarune experiment goes successfully. One is making the adventure exciting and forming the experiment, and the other is helping the experiment itself happen. AKA, one of them is the knight, and one of them is Sean. Allow me to explain. There's two different sets of gassers pulling the strings behind the scenes. Each one is doing a completely different task to make sure this scientific experiment is going successfully. Let's talk about the one that is assisting the experiment. Let's talk about the knight. The knight is the gasser we spoke to at the beginning of chapter one. This gasser is assisting the other gasser in the experiment. In order to do this successfully, he can't let the people participating in the experiment know he's involved. It's like a scientist studying lab rats. Gaster has to interfere with the experiment, but he can't let others know he's actually interfering. The only way for him to do this is to possess Chris and to make Chris open the dark fountains for him, so the adventure can continue. At the beginning of chapter 1, he asked, are we connected? This implies that this is the moment when Gaster realized that you, the player, and him are connected. This means that not only are you possessing Chris and Deltarune, but Gasser is as well. Anytime Chris throws out your soul and Deltarune to regain control of themselves, they aren't actually the ones regaining control. Gaster is the one who opens the fountain, and Gaster is the one who opens the next dark world. But just that line alone isn't enough evidence to support that Gaster is the knight. So let's look at better evidence. In the game files of Undertale, there is an unused horse stable. If you mod this horse stable into the game, there will be a person inside of it that simply says X in lowercase wingdings font. If you didn't know, in chess, a knight is represented by a horse. I don't know about you, but I find it really random that Toby would decide to put Gaster in a horse stable of all things. Especially when horses have nothing to do with this character unless you consider that he's the knight but how do we know this person is actually gaster i mean this figure looks nothing like him well this isn't the only time this figure appears if you mod the game again to an unused room you can actually see this figure and interact with it it will say redacted in wingdings font upon leaving the room it will take you to the sound test room where gaster's theme can be played so it's safe to say there's enough evidence to support that this figure is is Gaster. Now let's go over to the Delta Rune side of things. We all know about that secret egg that can be found in each chapter of Delta Rune. The egg reads, not too important, 
not too unimportant. This definition of the egg is actually true, because the egg itself is actually not that important. However, if you translate the word egg to uppercase wingdings font, you'll get a bunch of hand symbols. These symbols are actually the exact movements a knight would make in a board game. The person that gives you the egg in Deltarune is somebody called the man. The music file that plays here is called man.ogg. In Undertale, the river person has dialogue that says, beware of the man that speaks in hands. This is referring to Gaster as the man, because Wingdings is a font that has a bunch of hand symbols in it, and Gaster is the only character that speaks in in Wingdings font, so it's safe to assume that this character is Gaster. Also, Chris is the only character that can enter this egg area, even if you have multiple party members, which means that Chris is the only one that can see this event unfold no matter what you do. Wait, what's that? You still don't believe me? Okay, let's go with my greatest evidence of all, the Undertale 6th Anniversary Livestream. Before the livestream even started, there was a small part of the stream that gave facts about Undertale and Deltarune's development. There was one part of this buildup that I found interesting. Toby says that he scrapped a theme where you meet the knight behind a white door. I quote, the arrangement is really early, but I created this thinking of an animated intro for the game, similar to Wild Arms. I still see it in my head when I listen to the song. The best part would have been at the end when everyone is running up the staircase as the silhouettes of the bosses from all the chapters show up and the knight, standing in a white door at the top of the stairs, turns around and looks down at them. Now who do we know in Undertale that is behind a white door? There are two gasters, as I've established before. The gaster who is the knight, which is the gaster who is assisting the other gaster in making sure the experiment is successful. This gaster is the gaster from Deltarune. The other gaster is the one from Undertale. And this gaster is Shom. Let's dive deep into this. In my Spamton theory, I've established that gaster made Spamton and Jebel almost completely crazy. Upon being defeated, each secret boss in each chapter will drop a shadow crystal. Shadow crystals will probably be very valuable by the end of chapter. Chapter 7, but there is something confusing about them. Why is Sham collecting them? And why does he seem so pushy when he sees that you have one? It's because the shadow crystals are what the result is from making the secret bosses insane. The shadow crystals can only form once a secret boss is defeated. The whole reason Gaster is doing this experiment is not just for science, he wants the shadow crystals. Upon speaking to Sham, he seems really pushy to want the shadow crystals, but he also has knowledge of where the shadow crystals are. In chapter 2, after you've beaten Spamton, he gives you advice on how to beat the secret boss in chapter 3, when the Dark Fountain hasn't even been formed yet. How would Sham have this knowledge of something happening before it even happened in the first place? The only explanation is that Sham is Gaster, because Gaster already knows where the next Dark World is going to take place. And to top it all off, I want you to take a look at Sham's face and then take a look at Gaster's. Both of them are eerily similar in design. Not exact, but awfully similar. We also have knowledge that Sham was the one who locked up Jevil, but he's perfectly willing to lend you a part of the broken key to let Jevil be free. It's because he wants you to fight Jevil. He wants you to fight him and beat him so he can get the Shadow Crystal. Whether you believe that Sham is Gaster or not, you have to admit, a lot of this theory makes sense. Thank you for watching and check out this playlist of every Undertale theory I've ever made.